Not so long ago, it was just before Christmas actually, I was in a store which specializes in fabulous cookware. And um, uh, this lady was there and she was lifting up saucepans and looking under lids and everything else like this. Obviously trying to make a decision about making a major purchase for a long period of time for her family. She wanted great cookware. And I wanted to go up to her and I wanted to say, Madam, excuse me just a moment. Uh, my name is Graham Kerr. I used to be the Galloping Gourmet on television. Maybe you remember me. And uh, I used to design cookware. Could I help? And I really wanted to help her. But I'm afraid I missed it. I just really didn't want to interrupt her. She looked so deeply involved. And, um, but I got that chance now to be able to talk to you about cookware because obviously you wouldn't be watching this unless you actually wanted to make a really great decision about cookware yourself, your own family. So why don't you come home with me and then I can show you in my own environment just how I use what I consider to be the best there is in the world. Well, this is the home kitchen. It's long and narrow, something like me. And this is the cookware. This is where my wife Trina and I stand and do our thing. And um, look, I'll take this piece and show you. Now this is Scanpan, and it is famous. And this is one of the reasons why it's so famous. First of all, you can, you can hold on to it. Uh, it has a non-skid, if you like, uh, handle. And it's very cool to the touch. And it's, it's molded beautifully. And then this base, it, it's, it's extra thick. And that means it diffuses the heat. There are no bubbles in this. It's pressure cast aluminum. Right? And they've ground it so well that it can fit right onto an element like that and it, and it just bonds, diffuses the heat perfectly. Right? But it's the surface which is so special. It's called a professional non-stick surface. And the reason for the professional is this. You cannot, with ordinary uh, stuck-on materials, get a metal spatula and start digging at it. You think, Graham, come on, stop doing that, but it's okay. Because what's happened? This is actually um, coated with a mixture which is heated to 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit and fired into the aluminum at twice the speed of sound. It's in there and it's in there for keeps. So they, they went to an independent laboratory and they set up this, this spatula and this is the spatula they use. It's got all the markings from the lab on it. And they scraped it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards 100,000 times. At the end, they took it off it hadn't uh, made any marks on this at all, but what it had actually done was it carved away, this is another spatula, so you can see the difference. It carved away a part of that stainless steel spatula, put a decent edge on it too. That's because diamond is 10 in hardness and this is 9 in hardness. And that's really the reason why they can say to you and I, look, we'll give you a lifetime guarantee on this. That's 64,000 meals we can cook in our lifetime. And they're guaranteeing that to us. Isn't that a fantastic, it's like a family heirloom. Look, when it comes to, to cleaning, I've, I've got an old professional chef's pan here, and let's go into a professional kitchen and have a look behind the scenes, and I'll tell you about how to clean it. Come on. This really is behind the scenes. This is the famous Rose Room. Hi, chef in the Pacific Northwest, and their pan of choice is a heavy cast aluminum one, like this one, and uh, they've got professional crew here, so after they've bashed it around and flamed things and done everything, they just toss it away to the guy here, he does a marvelous job of cleaning up, oils it, and then sticks it back on the range again. Not like that at home, is it? Not a bit like that. Come home and I'll show you how I fix scan pan. That was getting a trifle hazardous there with all the flames going up. Look, you start cleaning your pan before you actually even use it. And you do this, you take it out of the box when you get home, and you place the pan into, uh, you know, warm soapy water, and give it a good wash off, and then dry it, rinse it and dry it, and then take it to the heat. Now here, it's on the stove, and you wind the heat up so it's medium high. Not all the way up, but sort of medium high, up there in the upper ranges, all right? Now, you then take a little oil and put the oil in the pan. About a tablespoonful and a half of oil for this size here. And then you shake it all over the bottom and around the sides. Make sure that it goes all the way over. Now this is hot pan and the oil is now running over that hot surface. And when you've done that, then you just simply turn the heat down. You don't have to bake it for hours in an oven, which you have to do with some other kind of seasoning pans. Right? And so when it gets cold, then all you need to do is just take a, a, a cloth and just wipe up the oil on the surface, smooth it all the way around the outside, 
ripe it around the outside inside too and then you're ready to be able to put it away and uh, and you can always use it it's seasoned it's ready now this pan i've just had on the heat here just um did a couple of pieces uh, of turkey there and just lay that out on the dish and you've got what is really important about this surface you'll see here on the pan that there's some residues that's the meat juices have come out and they're really cooked onto the pan base now one of these slick kind of uh, here today gone tomorrow kind of surfaces you'll find that the residues attach to the food but they're never on the bottom of the pan and that's a, a problem because you see what I love to do is take a little bit of wine, pour that onto the surface. You see straight away how that starts bubbling up all the way around. And you just take a brush just to demonstrate just how loose this wonderful mixture. Look at it. It just comes straight up like that. So you just turn it all the way around the outside and then take it straight from that and pour it over the top of the, of the veal or whatever you're using, just a little dusting with, with some parsley. Then the final finish off is just simply to clean the pan. You just pour in a little cold water and just turn it all around, just shake the pan. And what's happening now is that it's actually steaming that metal surface, steaming it all thoroughly. Pour that out into a stock pot because you don't want to waste it because it's excellent stuff. And just simply take a towel, turn it around and it becomes beautifully clean. Look at that. It takes you clean into the next century. Well, Look, you remember how we started this thing off in the restaurant and we had one of these beat up old pans? Well, this is the tradition of the past. This is a good, strong tradition. And what ScanPan did, they modeled their wonderful cookware on the traditional past, but they have superimposed now the technology of the future and taken us clean into the 21st century. But that's not all they've done. Just watch this last thing that I've got to share with you. You know, for years, I cooked for you on television. Perhaps uh, we used to share time together in that way. I wonder if you ever noticed, I really did like my cookware to look great. And uh, so often, I just use it once or twice and then put it on one side and use another set because I wanted it to look perfect. So often, what we use at home doesn't look so perfect and it can't go out on display. But that's what I love about ScanPan, because you can use it and use it and use it, and it still looks as if it can go out on display. It's showcase. And I know, because, you know, when I look back at all of this, this full range here, I went round the world with it. I went two times around the world, and for two years I've been using most of this equipment that you see here, and it stood up wonderfully well. Just have a look at it in detail. This one, I cook large fish in, and it, it's... Uh, you know, the Chinese large fish and also the Yucatan Peninsula, those type of things. Great stuff. This one, a crepe, good sized crepe when you do filled crepe in some way. This, when you want a pan where you're going to grill something, give it that outdoor appearance, but you want to do it indoors. These two pans here, according to how large your family is or what kind of hospitality you want to do. And then the workhorse of all, which of course is the standard vegetable, potato and pasta dish. Uh, this little one here I use for individual sauces and also for my breakfast bear mush that I have every morning. Oats and raisins and seeds and things like that. Beans. Uh, nowadays, bean dishes are fabulous, full of fiber. And here, thick sides, thick base, tightly fitting lid in the oven. Splendid stuff. And here, an omelet. I love omelets. And now, smaller number of eggs in the omelet. And this is a nice small omelet pan. A two egg omelet slips out of the pan easily and for small crepe if you're going to do dessert crepes. Then here, look at the a mass of steam. But when you put the lid on place, see no steam. That means it's waterless or less water cooking. And there's fresh vegetables in there simmering away in their own juices, just exactly the sort of way I like it. And a great stock pot. Now look, when you're trying to drop salts and fats and sugars out of things, there's nothing better than to have a fabulous stock pot limpid fat well i mustn't carry on about it it's an excellent stock pot and then the pièce de résistance a huge pan here look at the distribution of heat this is diffusion of heat and it's a perfect example i would use this pan for poaching about eight cutlets of salmon and here see how i can still hang on to that handle and see how insulated that is it's fantastic stuff 
Now, I think by now you'll understand that I'm an enthusiast for Scanpan, and you'll make your own decision, of course. And I suppose, therefore, there is only one thing that confronts you at the present moment as a choice, and that is whether you're going to stand there and watch this whole thing through once again. Who knows, you might have missed something. Well, whatever you choose to do, thanks for your time. I enjoyed spending it with you. God bless.